week, Lab TV travels to Albuquerque, New Mexico to the Air Force Laser Effects Lab. This place is all about lasers, including some really big ones with Star Wars beams and missile destroying power. We're talking major kilowatts here. The lasers are all around us. We can find them everywhere. Uh, in the military, we use them for such things as targeting and um, simple things as laser pointers. In everyday life, uh, they're at supermarkets, in barcode scanners, uh, in CD and DVD players. We use them to read the material on the surfaces of CDs. There are laser rulers and levels and printers. Lasers send telephone and TV signals, cut through metal, and even help doctors do surgery. A laser beam is a very coherent, concentrated beam of light. Visible light, as we know it, is 400 to 700 nanometers. It's visible light. When you turn on a, a room switch, the light fills the room. Coherent, concentrated light is a single uh, beam of light, very concentrated, all the same wavelength. Visible light waves fan out. But in lasers, all the light waves are parallel and move in a straight line. To see how lasers work, let's start with atoms. So we take uh, atoms, and atoms are composed of electrons, protons, and neutrons. And we excite the electrons by using energy. That energy can be in the form of light, it could be in the form of electricity, it could be in the form of chemical reactions. And when we excite those electrons, and then they come back down in energy levels, they release photons, which are light. In a laser, we collect those photons, and we bounce them back and forth between mirrors. And we get them in a basically a straight line. You can think of it as like a marching band, everybody marching in a straight line. And we've got, when we got them all in a straight line, we release them in a beam. And that's the directed energy, or the laser beam. So we take different types of materials, ranging from glasses and ceramics, films, to metals, and we shoot them with lasers. The scientists use all sorts of lasers for these tests, including some really big ones. This here is a chemical laser. It's a 45 kilowatt laser, which makes it pretty powerful. The long tubes are part of the optical cavity. Instead of having air inside of those tubes, we have a vacuum which contains the gases of helium, uh, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. We then apply electricity. The electricity excites the electrons in the atoms of the gases. When the electrons come back down in energy levels, they release photons, which is light. At each end, we have a mirror on the optical cavity. Those mirrors reflect the photons back and forth. This mirror is slightly transparent, so about 15% of the light that hits it comes out, and this is where you get the beam of the laser. The real cutting edge research takes these powerful laser beams and makes them portable. Well, one of our uh, types of solid state lasers is actually a fiber laser. And now this is uh, one of our latest developments in terms of lasers. This is actually a fiber laser here. Um, this is just a bundle of fiber optics like you find in telecommunication lines. And uh, here's the actual end of it with the lens. Before, if you wanted to have to move a laser beam, you'd actually have to move the laser itself. They're very big, very cumbersome. But with fiber lasers, using fiber optic technology, we can actually take the laser beam and move it. So we can actually take the laser beam and bend it around a corner, for say, or over a wall and so no longer do we have to actually move the laser we can just sort of transfer the laser beam much like a water hose in your yard. This is cutting edge stuff there's a lot of new things that are happening a lot of new discoveries uh, research technology coming out of it and it's a lot of fun because you get to touch things put your hands on things and do things that not very many people get a chance to do and that's really pretty cool when you think about it. To find out more about lasers check out labtvonline.org